Hi there, it's David Williams from Open Online College again, and today I want to talk to you about electromagnetism. In particular, I'm going to talk about the fact that a changing electric field creates a magnetic field. And since current is a moving electric charge, we look at the fact that a moving electric charge is going to result in a, a moving electric field, and therefore current carrying wires are going to create magnetic fields. And, and actually, in fact, the definition of current comes from the fact that current creates a magnetic field. And the definition for current, one amp of current, is defined as the current required to produce an attractive magnetic force of 2 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons per meter of length between two straight, parallel, infinitely long conductors with negligible cross-sectional area placed one meter apart in a vacuum. And this is the official SI definition of current. And it's kind of strange that that the current is the base unit, the core unit for for electric concepts and, and the coulomb isn't. But that that's what uh, the SI unit is is. It's the one amp, and that's that that strange long definition. Now what we're looking at here, these these two pictures here, are two electrical circuits. We've got one that's just a, a one loop of wire and a battery in a loop of wire carrying some current, and the other one is a battery with wire that's that's looped around three or four times. And so, since since current is going to create a, a magnetic field, the amount, the strength of that magnetic field, is going to be determined by how much current is being carried. And if we look at this this one particular example here, we've got the magnetic field. And we can figure out the direction, the orientation of that magnetic field if we use if we use a one one version of the right hand rule. And that version of the right hand rule says that we take our finger and we point it in the direction that the conventional current is flowing. So in this case, conventional current is flowing in this direction. Right? So our thumbs pointing in that direction, and our fingers, we wrap our fingers around the wire, and the direction that our fingers wrap is going to be the direction that that magnetic field is, and you can verify the magnetic field in the picture with uh, with using the right hand rule. And so the magnetomotive force in this particular example is just going to be how much current is flowing through it, because we only have one one loop of wire. Now, if we go over to this example over here, we can see again that the conventional we can see the direction of the conventional current, and it's going to be flowing in this direction. Right, so we can take the, the right hand rule and point our thumb in that direction. And at that top wire, we can see that our fingers are pointing downwards. So inside that loop of wire, our fingers are pointing downwards. The magnetic field will be pointing downwards. And if we keep our fingers wrapped and we, we take our thumb and just imagine going around that loop of wire, and as you go around, you'll notice that your fingers are always pointing downwards. So the magnetic field, no matter where you are on that particular loop of wire, the magnetic field will always be pointing downwards. So each one of those loops of wire is going to be adding to the magnetic field. So the more loops of wire you have, the stronger your magnetic field is going to be, and the more magnetic motor force you're going to be. And it, it's a linear relationship. And magnetic motor force is equal to amp current. So in this case, it's going to be how much current is flowing through here times how many loops we actually have. So we have three or four loops. So it's going to be the current times three or three or four is going to give us how much magnetic motor force we have. What we're going to do is we're going to quantify and qualify what's going on with the magnetic field creating created in this electromagnet. And you'll notice we've got this battery connected to this loops of wire that's looping around this, let's call this an iron core toroid. So it's, it's a ferromagnetic material that the wire is wrapped around. So the reluctance or the opposition to the magnetic field is going to be very, very low in this magnetic toroid, in this, this ferromagnetic toroid. And so the magnetic field is pretty much going to be contained entirely within the loop. We won't have much loop outside, much magnetic field outside that loop in, in the air. So before before we get into the, the details, actually let's let's put some specifics down here. So we've got the circumference of this loop, this toroid, is let's say it's point two meters. 0.2 meters around. We have 10 amps of current flowing in the wire. Let's say without counting, let's say we've got 20 turns around the around the core. 
And let's also say that the permeability of this core is 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4 Weber's per amp meter. And now you'll remember that that's, that's, this is related to the reluctance, but looking at the, using the magnetic flux density and the field intensity relationship instead of the magnetic flux and M and F relationship. So the, that particular relationship is that the flux density is equal to the permeability, which is mu is the permeability, it's just the property of the, of the, of the iron times H, the, the field intensity. So first thing to do is let's figure out what, what is the direction of this magnetic field that's being created. So we can see that the direction that conventional current is flowing will be that way. So if we point our thumb in that direction and wrap our fingers around the wire, see the wire comes around the front of the, of the toroid. So our fingers are wrapping around the wire and inside the loop, our fingers are going to be pointing downward. And if you take your finger or your thumb and just continue around the loops of wire, our fingers will always be pointing downwards. So the direction, the direction that our magnetic field will be going in is around this way. And remember, it's, it's a continuous magnetic field going to go from north to south. And it's going to be on one continuous loop. So that's going to be the direction that our, that our magnetic field is going. And then we, using the numbers that I've given you here, we can figure out, we can quantify the, the magnetic field strengths. And the first thing that we can, we can quantify is going to be the magnetomotor force. The magnetomotor force remember the amp turns. And so that's going to just be equal to the number of turns we have times how much current we have. We've got 20 turns carrying 10 amps gives us 200 amp turns. Now, again, for SI units, actually just two, uh, 200, 200 amps. The turns part is, is unitless, so it's just 200 amps is, is how much push we have in creating this magnetic field. Now, I gave, I was, I gave us the, the permeability, but I didn't give the reluctance. So what we're going to have to do now is we've got 200 amp turns of, of push being created in here. So what we want to figure out next is how much the field intensity is. Because the field intensity is just equal to MMF over how long is that the, the, the length of that, that the MMF is, is being created in. So we have 200 amp turns that's just 200 amps divided by 0 0.2 meters gives us 1,000 amps per meter, or amp turns per meter. Now, the next thing that we can figure out is the flux density. Remember, flux density is equal to mu h. So mu I gave as 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4 every per amp meter times 1,000 amp turns per meter is going to be equal to 0 0.41 Weber's per meter squared. Weber's per meter squared, of course, are Tesla's. 0.41 Teslas is the magnetic flux density in this in this tool right here. And if we want to figure out what the, the final thing to figure out is the actual flux, we've got the flux density. If we want to know what the actual flux is, we would need to know the cross-sectional area. And let's say the cross-sectional area is cross-sectional area. Uh, Make up the number here, 4 times 10 to the 
minus 4 meters squared for the cross-sectional area. So that means our flux is going to just be equal to the B times A, flux density times the area. So we get 0 0.41 Tesla times 4 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. Tesla is Weber's per meter squared, so we end up with just Weber's as our units, and we have 1.64 times 10 to the minus 4 Weber's. Okay, so this next example is, is a somewhat realistic one, but we're going to look at an electromagnet where we can actually put something within the electromagnet and expose it to the magnetic field that the electromagnet creates. And in this example, I've got say, that cartoon representation of my electromagnet. Here's my electromagnet the, the, with, with the, creating the north and the south. This is the core to maintain the electromagnetic field, to keep the magnetic field within within where we want it to where we want it to stay and then we've got an air gap where we're going to actually put something in. Now some facts about this about this particular system. Okay, so we've got this electromagnet has a thousand loops. And the total length around the circuit that, so this is the length of that the electromag that, that magnetic field is going to be contained within is one meter long. And within that one meter, it includes 0 0.1 meter air gap. So the length of that is, is 0.1 meters. The, what else do we need to know? Uh, the cross-sectional area. We need to know the cross-sectional area of that air gap is 0 0.1 meters squared. What else do we need to know? Well, we need to know how easy it is to create flux within the circuit, given whatever flux, uh, whatever magnetomotive force we create. So, so how easy is it to create that flux? Well, if we know the permeability of the two things. So if we know the permeability of the air, permeability of air is about 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. And the, the units for this are levers per amp ampere meter. And the permeability of the core, so we'll call this part, this part's the core, and it's uh, some kind of iron maybe, or some, definitely some kind of ferromagnetic material, is 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4 Weber's per amp meter. So you can see the permeability is, is this, this, the core is much more permeable to the magnetic field than this part, so it's much easier to create the magnetic field in here than it is in this part. And what we want to do for this particular magnetic field, we want to create a magnetic flux density that's equal to one tesla within this air gap. And in order to do that, we need to know how much mag well, we need to know how much magnetomotive force we need. So magnetomotive force we know is equal to n times i. We know what i is. So what we want to do is find out how much current we need in this electromagnet to create one tesla of flux density within that gap. So a couple things to keep in mind. The magnetic circuits are fairly analogous to electrical circuits, so flux density is analogous to current, or current density I guess would be more accurate, but but in a, in a series circuit, flux density is going to be constant through all the parts. So it's going to be constant in the core, it's going to be equal to the core and it, as it is to the, in the air gap, so those two, it will be equal in those two parts. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the magnetomotive force that's created here is going to be applied in across the, the core and the gap. And so the, the amount created is going to be equal to the amount in the core plus the amount in the gap. So that's where we can start. The magnetomotive force is equal to n times i, and it's equal to how much m and f in the core plus MMF in the gap. And and this is, again, analogous to electrical circuits. The, in an electrical circuit, you have a, a voltage source, and you have stuff that the voltage just gets dropped across. And the, the voltage source is going to be equal to the, the sum of the voltage drops. 
And if we break down what the MMF is, it's going to be equal to the field intensity in the core. Or not permeability. Field intensity of the core times the length of the core. And the MMF of the gap is going to be equal to the field intensity of the gap times the length of the gap. So we can figure out, we, we know the length of the core is, is 0.9 meters and the length of the gap is, is 0.1 meters. So what we're going to do now is figure out what the field intensity of the core is and what the field intensity of the gap is. And we can use that using the fact that we know the flux density in both the core and the gap is going to be 1 tesla. And we know what the permeability of the air is and what the permeability of the core is. We remember B is equal to UH or H field intensity is equal to E over mu or the flux density divided by the permeability. So simply the H of the core, field intensity of the core is going to be equal to 1 tesla divided by the permeability of the core which is 4.1 times and to minus four, minus four, what we put meter, and solving this, we come up with the number of two point four, sorry, two thousand four hundred thirty-nine amperes per meter. And the field intensity of the gap is going to be equal to 1 tesla divided by 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 over the gap meter equals 7.98 times 10 to the fifth amp turns per meter. Now we can put these numbers back into my MMF equation that I've got at the top of the page. 2439 times 0.9 plus 7.98 times 10 to the fifth times 0.1 meters. And we get N times I is equal to 7.98 times 10 to the fifth amp turns. And we know what n is, we have a thousand loops. So the current will be equal to 7.98 times 10 to the fifth. Oops, sorry about that. divided by a thousand. And current equals 798 amps. So in order to create a current of, uh, sorry, in order to create a flux density of one tesla, in this system where we've got a thousand loops of wire, a total length around of one meter with an air gap of 0 .1, 0 0.1 meters, we're going to need a current of 798 amps to push that to create that flux density.